So here we are today in Blender and we are going to import a point cloud. Uh, so straight away what I'm going to do is I'm going to import a Stanford PLY or a .PLY file. Uh, it's just as simple as that to get the point cloud in. And I'm going to delete my cube. And in fact, I think what I'll do is I'll just uh, move this cloud slightly above the grid like that. And what I'm going to do here is to make this look a little better, I'm going to change the timeline into a shader editor. I'm going to create a new shader for my point cloud. And I'm simply going to do a shift A and I'm going to search for an attribute which just happens to be at the top of my list like that. Makes it nice and easy. I'm going to connect the color to the base color and then in the name I'm going to call it COL for col or color, like so. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the shader editor into a geometry node editor. I'm just going to click on new like that. And I'm going to need a couple of nodes here. So if we do a shift A and search for a mesh to points. So mesh to points right there. And I could drop that right there. And immediately you'll see that now the point cloud is being displayed as these little points. And we can affect the size of those points right here. So I might uh, just drop this size down a little bit to 0 0.02 like that, make them a little bit smaller. At this point, I could also set my uh, render up. So press Z on the keyboard, you can see it's on solid. And what I might do is come over to matte cap and use the normal matte cap like that. Now uh, I'm going to set the I'm going to set up the uh, cycles renderer so you can render this with cycles. Uh, but to do that, we need another node, which is going to be, if I do a shift A and search for set material, like so, and we're just going to drop that there. And we need to reference the material that is on our point cloud, right? So if we go back to the shader editor, and it's actually material.001, so if I just copy that, go back to uh, Geometry Node Editor and just paste that into there, like so. Or you just copy from there. Uh, now, if I turn my, uh, if I turn the uh, Cycles Renderer on, so if we click on the little render icon here, and we notice that by default we're in EV, we should just turn Cycles on like that. You might want to use GPU compute. And I think the default settings, if we click on, uh, let me see now, this little icon here in the viewport, I mean, instead of having final, we use the preview settings like that. It's going to make a, well, we'll make sure it's set to preview anyway. It's going to make uh, rendering in the viewport a little bit faster. Uh, and so all I need to do now is press Z on the keyboard and I can pick rendered like that and it'll start to render with the existing light in the scene. Now I think what we should do here is just delete the default light at which point things will look a little bit dark and also the grid is interfering. So if we go to uh, overlays, we can switch off the floor, we can also switch off the axes like that. And we can also ask the Cycles Renderer to not use scene lights or world lights like that. And all of a sudden, things should look a little bit better like that. We can kind of see what we're doing. And there we go. 